Larry's a buddy of mine. I uh, actually met through uh, Ray Marine. I've been on their pro staff for a long time, and Larry's a VP of sales there. And throughout the years doing things for Ray Marine and in the fishing industry, we got to be buddies and have a lot of common interests. Chris is one of our pro ambassadors at Ray Marine, and as vice president of sales, the pro ambassadors roll up to me. And so over the years, we've gotten to know each other real well because of his, uh, his role at Ray Marine. Larry and I were actually duck hunting together out in Washington this year. And while we were out there, he had mentioned that, you know, their state actually has a pretty good turkey population now and that we ought to come out and try and do a show here. And everything kind of lined up and we got some dates put together and actually ended up coming up and hunting with him here uh, for opening day. Well, New England's really unique. We're uh, about an hour from Boston to the, uh, to the west in Massachusetts. I live in southern New Hampshire, so I'm about a half uh, mile north of the border. I spend a lot of time hunting in Massachusetts. Very hilly. Uh, we still have a lot of, uh, of rural ground that's farmed uh, in the area. Um, and a lot of people live out in this part of the state and then commute into Boston for their jobs just because of the setting. Rolling into town, it's a neat area. It, you know, I wasn't sure really what to expect. I've driven through here before, but that's about it, the extent of it. You know, you come in, it's, it's kind of rolling hills, a lot of small family farms sprinkled in amongst kind of a rolling hills with a lot of maple trees and birch trees and really, really pretty, pretty part of the country. I've been hunting turkeys in Florida for probably the past 15, 20 years, but the Osceola is the only bird I've pursued. So my experience is with them and, and uh, because of that, I don't know, I think it gives me a little bit of patience when I'm in other places because our birds are notoriously quiet and, uh, and hard to get to commit and respond and stuff. So it was interesting to me and intriguing to me to be going somewhere outside of Florida and, and going after a totally different species of bird. Easterns are a little tougher bird than, than some of the other species. I would say that they're only second to the Osceolas. They have large winter groups uh, with the eastern birds and they start breaking up in the first part of April. So when our season opens, they have a lot of hens with them. They tend to gobble on the roost, but then they're pretty quiet on the ground after there's been a little bit of pressure on those birds. We got into town a day before season opened. And so we headed out the morning before season to kind of get a look at the birds coming off a roost and, and what we thought you know, might happen and get an idea of what we might be dealing with the next day. We were able to watch section of, of field that these turkeys were gonna come down from roost into from an elevated position up on a hill. And so we got set up and probably half an hour before, you know, real good visible daylight, we started hearing birds sounding off from the roost in the trees. You know, I'm sitting there and, and I can hear at least half a dozen different gobblers in one group in the trees that, that we're planning on hunting and surrounding me in any different direction could probably hear another dozen or so more. So it was good for morale. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Got some good audio, you think? Yeah. Decided kind of night before that we think we might actually have a really good opportunity to harvest one with a bow and to do so in the open um, behind a little bit of natural brush blind and not from a tent, you know, and not from a pop-up and, and see if we could get it done, you know. it's. Uh, Chances are a lot that can go wrong in that situation, but with the amount of birds and, and the amount of time Larry had watched them and, and the consistency of them, we thought that it would be a, a good idea, and I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. This morning we saw these birds come into here. They, where they, they came from these trees? Yeah, the, roost, the primary roost is right here to that farthest evergreen. They'll be lying all across that. So they're close. The first, the closest one close. is about 70 yards. And they're not back to where they have a line of sight at us. We got, when we come in here in the morning, no lights, you know, no, no lights on on your cameras and just no talking, like literally like ninjas. Just silence, get in the blinds, get set. Cause I mean, they can see us long before we can see them. 
about half of the group is flying directly into the field within 25 or 30 yards of our setup. No room for error. So we got done scouting and I had some of these broadheads designed, you know, for a headshot or neck shot. We decided to go back and sight in our bows. You know, I've been traveling and, and in order to use these broadheads, in order for them to clear the riser on the bow, I had to have arrows cut two and a half inches longer than my normal arrows and the broadheads are 125s instead of hundreds. So decided we definitely need to spend some time and, and dial in the bow with those new arrows out to, you know, 30 yards or so. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Ray Marine. Go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. The birds had been pitching down from their roost, landing in, in this little bit of a funnel of, of the narrow part of the field, and slowly working their way out and around the point, around the horn of the inside of the U, if you would, and, uh, and, and milling out and then working out to their nests. So Larry had had us positioned, um, had a blind set up just just down from where these birds pitch down to, to where once they pitch down, they should make their way by us, you know, on their way out to do their daily routine. Opening morning, uh, we got into the blind nice and quiet, and probably 20 minutes before twilight, we had a doe blowing and wheezing at us from uh, kind of straight across the field, almost, almost under the roosts, and she made her way off. Didn't seem to affect the birds a whole lot as far as their uh, vocalism from the trees. They were gobbling, the hens were clucking, and, and everybody seemed good, but the hens pitched down, and behind them, the jakes and gobblers pitched down, and, and almost immediately, you could tell that that they, they knew something was up from, I guess, from that deer alerting them, you know? And rather than doing the same routine that they'd done every day for the last two weeks, they did a 180, went the complete opposite direction, made their way into the, into the woods and, and started working their way east. And uh, at that point, you know, what can you do? They might come back. You think they're gonna work through the woods? We decided to hang tight, let those birds go, not alert them to anything, and uh, you know, so we could either pursue them later on or, or you know, another day. And not too long after that, we heard a lone gobble come from maybe six, seven hundred yards off to our left. We had that one distant gobble, and so I just kept the soft talk with him, and uh, he'd seen the decoys once he got out into the field, and all I needed was the was really just the clucking, purring, and the and the decoys to bring him in. Bird came down from the hill and worked its way all the way right into the clearing where we were sitting. Sat there strutting, didn't really know. It seemed like he didn't really know what to think of our decoys. He wasn't fired up on him as far as wanting to be combative. He was checking him out, but once he got in close, he was in inside of 30 yards, right at 30 yards or so. And, um, you know, we tried to call a little bit. And at that point, he's close enough where you can tell that the calls aren't coming from the decoys, which were at 20 yards. So he got hung up out there, 28 yards, 26 yards, something like that. He started to, you know, I'm, I've got the bow in my lap, and I've only got brush up to knee high or so, maybe a little a bit above my waist. So I'm trying to wait for an opportunity for him just to give me a split second to turn away in another direction or turn and strut towards our decoys to give me an opportunity to draw. Never really happened. He started putting at us and started taking a few steps kind of away back in the direction he came. I 
went ahead and sent one and it went just maybe eight, 10 inches right of the target and just barely grazed his, his back and his wing and gave him a little haircut, trimmed some feathers and he took off and, uh, and that was that. <laughs> Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Hooters, the cure for the common restaurant. The American Barrels, live free or die, a true American spirit. You know, one of the things about hunting, fishing, and really the outdoors in general, in order to be successful, a lot of times you have to be very instinctual and you have to make decisions on the fly best laid plans rarely work out to fruition in the outdoors. So we realized, okay, we, I missed a shot on that bird. He took off, but it's a bow shot. You know, we didn't disturb the other birds that had worked through the, through the woods. So we decided to make a move all the way around the head of trees and try and cut that big group of birds off before they made their way across that field and up into the woods uh, where the hens would nest for the day. We did have options. This was also a unique farm where we could see potentially where the other birds were going to go to spend the morning because there was really a peninsula of woods that separated two hay fields and a cornfield. We came around, got around into the field, and majority of the birds had worked into the woods already. There was a lone tom down in a little bit of a low bottom out in the middle of the field very, very exposed. So we decided to do something that we hadn't really done before and is em employ a technique with a decoy that you hold and we actually would hold that decoy in front of us and, it, and advance straight at the bird with the decoy between us and the bird. The scoot and shoot is a tom strutting decoy and I've got a, a fan on it from, from the previous season and it's got a little handle on the inside and you crawl behind it and when you move to uh, a point where you get the attention of that Tom, uh, he comes to fight, and uh, it's incredible. Just put him right in front of your face when you're walking. Here we are, creeping through the field, creep down the edges, wood line, and and uh, and out into the field, and we've got this decoy in front of me, and and we we know the bird's somewhere over this hill, just don't know exactly where. We creep up and I kind of pop up and look over the hill and I can just barely see the top of this bird's fan. And uh, apparently he could just barely see the top of that decoy fan too because as soon as I saw him, he bowed up and started running towards us. And literally we had time to take three steps and this bird probably closed 75 yards and within a few seconds was 10 feet in front of me. And I uh, basically dropped the decoy, grabbed my gun, and took a shot. Oh, man. Man, did he run at you hard. He's gonna knock you over. <laughs> there he is. Great job, oh, man. Thank you. Great job, that is awesome. That was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, eight inch, a, eight and a half. Probably eight, eight and a half, yeah. Fairly typical two-year-old. Yeah. Well, we went from a bow hunt to an insane spot and stalk, but <laughs> whatever, I'll take it. Half inch, maybe three quarter, yep. five yeah, eighths, probably. Five eighths. Real typical two year old. Two year old. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with XS Sight Systems, the fastest sights in any light. Boatmaster Trailers the name that represents quality. We decided to move our blind over and deeper into the funnel, uh, maybe 75 yards, enough that if they pitch down, they should be pitching down a little bit to our left and then turning and coming back by us. Morning comes, we make our way into our blind and and managed to get everybody in and set up and, and not disturb the birds or anything. And we're sitting there and once again, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes before daylight, I can barely make out silhouette of a deer out in the field, uh, right about where the turkeys wanna land. 
that deer blows, another one blows inside the field uh, where the turkeys had headed the day before. And I'm going, oh great, I, I already know what's gonna happen. And sure enough, these birds pitched down, flew out into a wider part of the field where they feel safer. So now they went back to their normal routine and walked right away from us out the other way and around the point. Yeah, our plan was if they don't fly down perfectly for the bow, then we'll move the hunt to the other side and we'll try the scoot and shoot again. Literally, just crawl it out. I'll stay directly behind you. When they, if one starts to charge, I'll draw off of you, obviously. If he comes up in bow range, I'll take a shot. We just decided to hang tight. Sat through a bit of rain, you know, weather changing a bit, light sprinkles, and within, actually a lot quicker than we thought, within maybe an hour and a half or so, we had uh, a good mature bird coming across the field. He was on the complete opposite side of the field, so we had to kind of make a call whether or not we were going to sit there and try to pull him to us, or if we were going to try and swing around the back side of this hill in this low bottom and come up and make a move directly at him and intercept him. So that's what we decided to do. I'm gonna stay right behind you. What we came up with was Larry's in front holding this decoy and I'm crawling behind him and Kevin's crawling behind me and then Behind us, we have two other camera guys staggered throughout the field, uh, you know, 100 yards away or so. And so here's three guys crawling on their hands and knees across a hay field directly at a turkey. And uh, I'll be damned if it didn't work, you know. And uh, this turkey sees the decoy. I think he thought something was really weird about it, but he he thought that was a, a, a male bird and he was he should probably challenge it and so he started kind of making his way towards us and we're making our way towards it trying to get up to a little bit of a crest of a high spot to where he didn't have a chance to get above us and see that there was a big long train of hunters <laughs> behind his uh, competitor so we uh, we inched up and sure enough you know Larry just basically prone on his stomach with this decoy turning it and giving it some movement. And sure enough, this bird comes up. He gets to about 40 yards. I went ahead and came to draw and uh, was just, I'm at kind of full draw behind Larry, like pointing my arrow away from him and trying to just, every time he'd kind of lower the fan, I'd get a glimpse of the bird. And you know, so the fan would lower and there's the bird at 40 and then it'd lower and there's the bird at 35 and then at 30 and I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm telling Kevin behind me, like, dude, talk to me. Can you see the bird? Like, let me, is he, is he at 20? Where is he at? You gotta talk to me. Is he at 20? Keep your head down, Larry. The bird stuck his head up, and I sent an arrow his way and connected and uh, got my second Eastern and my first bird with a bow. Uh, it's always a good time to be in the woods. I mean, we spent uh, four days in a row where we were up at, I believe, 315 and hunting straight through right till the end of uh, the last minute that we could hunt. Uh, we had a lot of birds around us, incredible amount of footage of, of strutting toms, uh, great friends, you know, doing what we do in the outdoors. It was just a fantastic week. It was an awesome trip. You know, we got to travel up the whole eastern side of the country, see some great sights on the way up, drive through some big cities where I'm sure we stood out and didn't belong. And, uh, you know, got to spend a few days in the woods with a good friend, doing something we both love. I got my first Eastern, I got my second Eastern, got a bird with my bow. It was all good, man. Awesome trip.